and discussion. I don't know if there's another chair because the sound designer is here as well. Maybe he could join. Is it what? Richard. Sure. 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 Hey, the attrition rate wasn't bad either. <laughs> Where's that, where's that sound designer? Where's that sound designer? Would you come? Would you try this, please? <laughs> so, we're going to be listening to sound designer doing all the his voices and stuff. Wow, he did a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you lay out everyone's talent, don't you? Which you have to do, I think. I mean, is it correct that this is what you call a low budget film? No, this is super high budget. <laughs> it's expensive to make. It's five point six million dollars. Ooh. You know what? I've never seen the film before. What I found stunning was all the music. That's Joe Strummer, right? I think we dodged a bullet, you know. 
group. So it's all I can say. But no, it's not a hot dog trunk panel. It's a Jimmy Carter. I think we've forgotten him. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, I think we've forgotten Jimmy Carter. But um, maybe this gentleman has it in the audience. I remember Jimmy Carter. Yeah, I I was in the world. I'm more. Mexico, and slightly before the gas and purchase. 
So Walker was always on the cusp of things, on the cusp of one of his destiny. You know. And sometimes he was a bit ahead of the game, and that can be as bad as, you know, as Vanderbilt says, you know, nobody remembers men who lose. You know, even though he was so important at the time, he was, he was um, more, there was more press given to Walker than to either of the presidents uh, in the time in which he, he operated.
least in my history book, invented the word and the concept of sound design. And can you tell us what sound design is and what you did in the film we just saw? Because I think the sound is fantastic, or the music, or both. I can't make a distinction between the two. Well, I mean, sound works uh, in a uh, more oblique, sort of subtle way. People aren't really a, people are aware of music. They know that what music connotes sound uh, is sort of this strange, uh, mysterious thing that we sort of take for granted. We never know when it's working on us or not. And one of the things I enjoy about what I do is I can manipulate people without them even being conscious. You're conscious when music is telegraphing is the wrong word, but with bad movies, music telegraphs. But uh, sound has this ability to work in a very subtle, subconscious way. And uh, Alex's picture uh, has this sort of strange, uh, I don't want to say it's detached, but it sort of barely holds on to the surface of the planet in a way. And uh, it creates this sort of, there's a limbo in it that allows you to play around a lot. And so I chose to not play up the action sequences in a conventional way. They almost always have this sort of dreamy, unreal quality that to me reflected uh, Walker's state of mind. That kind of thing. I mean, this this was what almost thirty years ago. Yeah, well, eight or seven, eight, 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 seven, eight, seven. Right. And I was only uh, twenty-one years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was only like, ten years into my career, maybe eight. And so this was a an early effort for me. You know, there were other things I had done, and uh, but it was very very fertile ground. Developing a set of ideas and a style. Um, I'm I'm thankful that there are directors like Alex who uh, sort of have a tremendous capacity to give people latitude to be uh, to stick their neck out, to take chances, and to fail. You know, I mean, there's some things in here that I'm really not going to have with, but uh, he always had smiled and sort of accepted whatever it was I came up with. I mean, what I mean, the great, the great gift that Richard gave to the film was to do it in mono, because at this point, for only, we weren't into like 5 or 7.1 or anything like that in those days, there was the choice between doing a, um, a mono or a two-channel stereo mix. And I had just, we had gone to Nicaragua with a print of Sid and Nancy, which had made in stereo, and played it to people in Nicaragua over mono, over a mono system. And it sounded so kind of awful. And I just thought, if you make this film mono, it'll play in any cinema in the world that it will sound all right. And that's probably still true, right? If you have a mono track, it's just going to default to all the speakers, right? No, that's not true. We've <laughs> done, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think, two of the things we've done have been in Mono. Yeah, we have three visits, but in Mono. Three visits, but in Mono, too. And that's an interesting exercise. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's all frustrating and sort of liberating. It allows you to think about other things. <laughs> In that first, that first part when they come into Nicaragua and have the first war and when the men are attacking the war, and that was the most dreamy sequence, really. Yeah. And was that like supplied? Were there effects supplied, or did you just do that in the mix room? I mean, or was that your? Was that your no, you built it all. You yeah. built. It was just Joe Strummer's music and the effects that you built. Right. So just like standard effects that you. Exactly. That was your... Yeah, yeah. That, that was my take. It seemed, it seemed more believable. It, it made the movie, to me, more believable than if it was literally 
you tried to do what you were actually seeing. Yeah. I think what you wouldn't hear now, you wouldn't hear a bad sequence like that anymore because now the goal is just to put everything in there. It's like the mixing. There's a philosophy of mixing now with music too, isn't it? Where everything is the same volume. So even the fire things are very loud. And the volume is generally equal. Whereas what goes on in that part of the is sometimes it gets really quiet and really minimal and then it builds up again. So it's kind of an old style of sound design and mixing that doesn't seem to happen anymore. The issue, the issue is serving the image and I don't want to use the word message, but there's a germ of an idea, there's a sensibility that exists. It exists on the location when Alex was there, and you connect with that and try to, to follow through, and uh, hopefully it works. Oh, you know, I want to ask a question, uh, Dan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I remember hearing about you ages ago before the internet, and I swear it was always in context of punk rock. But I went online, I couldn't find the references that I thought I remembered. I mean, you got all these punk rockers who trust you with their music and give you stuff. I mean, there's got to be some punk rock connection behind the formation of your philosophy, I think, even. You know, to, you're not making an establishment film here, you know, you're, you're a rebel of some kind. Well, I mean, the idea of the punk rock thing, right, was that you could make your own music. Um, and you didn't need a record company. And I think that what we were trying to do, even though this one was funded by Universal Pictures in the end, but it was never our intention of the outside. Our intention was just to make good, good film about the subject. And try not to involve the studio or a big time as if it was possible. Um, and I imagine that was the goal of the original, you know, the original console of ironically, of course, the sex yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Although then the sex pistols and the classical masters of playing these big record companies, or imagining that they were playing the big record companies. But it did seem, towards the end, it did seem in a way that the, the Joe was being a bit controlled by capital. In a way, by virgin, that he can never quite escape from the control of those. So strong, yeah. yeah. That he could create the music, but in terms of reaching the public with the music, that was more difficult because they literally controlled the, the release date of the album. They wouldn't release the album when the film came out, and they didn't support it at all. So it was interesting to see somebody who was such a consular artist and musician and punk, you know, punk artist. Still struggling with big corporation. Yeah, I want to know about your personal encounters with punk ages ago. I, I feel that they must have shaped who you became. You know, ethics, whatever you call it, independence, you know, black humor, you know, against the oh, I that already. I mean, that was just, I'm just fitted with that. You know. I, mean, I, do think, I mean, I used to, when we were in Los Angeles, I mean, Dan here, you know, we used to go to like shows all the time. Starwood and seeing fear and, and, and the sort of judge and suicidal tape and 999, please. Not the people the, the real punk. Um, yeah, but that was just music, you know. I mean, it's, it's a mistake to think that. It's like Buñuel said, you know, Buñuel said that, that surrealism was intended to be not just a way of selling paintings, but a lifestyle and an existence and a form of rebellion against authority and it completely failed and the same way punk also completely failed and became really a fashion statement you know. so I you've got to have you've you got to exist beyond these mid, these things that come well, I hate labels, labels but I still think punk has has got legs because I meet I meet kids the kids of friends of mine who are starting punk bands so something in terms of principles is not dying that's great 